it's Steffi and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be sharing with y'all some Excel formulas that you need to know as an accountant. So if you like this kind of content and want to see a series, maybe I'll call the series like On the Job with Steffi or something like that. If y'all like this type of content, then please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments so that I know to do more videos like this. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, y'all, so I apologize in advance if you hear Juicy barking. It is raining outside and she really does not like the rain. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Let's just pretend that this is a report of all of the transactions in a specific bank account. First of all, whenever I get any reports that are in two separate columns like this, you see here's a debit, here's a credit. I like to put everything into one column so it's much easier for my formulas. As you can see, we have debits, so these are all positive numbers. Credits are subtractions. We're gonna insert a column here and I'm just gonna make this here amount. So what you can easily do is you press the equal sign. You always have to start with some type of equal or a plus sign or a minus sign. Otherwise, Excel will just think that you're typing in regular characters. So equals this. If you don't put a minus sign in front of it, it's just automatically going to think it's a positive number. And then I'm going to say minus this. Okay. And so as you can see, it gives back a positive number. Well then I'm gonna double click here. As you can see, it's like a plus sign. If you double click this, it is going to make the same formula all the way down. I'm pressing the control key and the down arrow button. If you do that, it takes you to the very bottom. Uh, keep in mind that it has to contain something in the cell. Otherwise, if you go all the way, if you press control down, it takes you to the very bottom. As you can see, there's like nothing here. Anyways, that's just a kind of a quick way to get around in Excel. Same thing goes like if you press control to the left button, it takes you all the way to the left. If you go control right button, it takes you all the way to the right. So that's an easy way to navigate in Excel. So anyways, just another tidbit there. So we're at the very bottom here. I'm gonna just press control arrow up again so I can get to the very top. And as you can see, this credit is now showing up in this column, but it has a minus sign in front of it because of the formula that we used here. So another thing that I do in Excel a lot is pasting values. So for example, if you start messing around with this data, it might screw up because this formula is grabbing this specific cell. So I'm gonna, going to copy all. You could either do it one of two ways. So you could either just click the top of this column D and do it, or you could go from this first formula, control shift down. It'll select everything in that column, as you see here. I'm gonna press control C on my keyboard. So this is an easy shortcut instead of having to go around up in this area. I'm just gonna go Alt E S V. What it's gonna do is just paste the numbers and it's gonna take away the formulas. You could do Alt E S T, it'll do the format, formulas, comments. But anyways, that is a, a very efficient way to get around in Excel is instead of having to click around, you're using stuff on your keyboard. So you can either press okay or just press the enter button. And as you can see, instead of having the formula there, it now has the number. Also another trick to get around in here is pressing Control Z. Let's say you didn't mean to make it all values. Press Control Z, it undoes, undoes, <laughs> undoes. If this is the only data you need in Excel and you no longer need these two columns, it's good to paste the values because look here, if you end up deleting this, because these are formulas here and they're pulling from these two columns, if you end up deleting this, you're gonna get this error just because you no longer have anything in those two columns. So press Control D to undo that. Copying Alt, E, S, and then V. Okay, so now when you delete these, it goes away. 
and no problem here. So another thing that's really a nice handy thing is something called freeze panes. And let's say you wanna be able to see your headers at all times, even if you're scrolling down. So see, I'm scrolling down right now, I lose my headers, right? Control arrow up to get all the way to the top again. So let's say you just want to be able to see the top row, that header. So what you're gonna do is go to freeze panes and then press freeze top row. So as you scroll down, you now see the header at all times. I'm gonna undo that, so I'm gonna press unfreeze panes. Let's say that you had a lot more information over here to the right. Let's say you go like this, oh, then you just lose the dates. And you wanna be able to see the header, you wanna see the date, and you wanna see the description at all times. When you wanna freeze it this way, you have to select the cell, and then everything to the left of it and above it is going to be frozen. So I'll show you what that means. Go to freeze panes, press freeze panes. So as you can see, the top row is frozen, so you always see the header. Then if you scroll to the right, you'll always see the description and the date. So that is how you use freeze panes. And also I will suggest always keeping a original copy before you even start messing with it somewhere on your computer and then work on a copy of it in a separate file. That way you always have the original to go back to in case you screw something up for whatever reason. You wanna always double check that you're doing things accurately. So what I'm gonna do is go all the way to the, to the bottom. So control arrow down, you can either Use a formula up here and press auto sum, which makes it super easy. Okay, so that's the amount. Or you can do a formula, which is what I usually do just because it's easier for me. So I always do equals sum. And as you go around in your job and you use Excel more often, you'll remember these formulas. But if you're new and you're unsure of how to use specific formulas, you can always press this insert function button. And you can see most recently used, or you could go to all, and then you can just look in that way. And it always gives you some kind of description as well. Equals sum, and then you always put parentheses because whatever's in the parentheses is the actual like equation that you're using. So I have the very bottom, I'm gonna press Control Shift Up button. It's going to take everything up there. Now notice that it's stopping at row 141, and that is because there's an empty cell here. So whenever you use this Control Shift Up or Control Up, it's going to stop at the next blank cell. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and just continue on. So I'm gonna press Control Shift Up again, up again, until it goes all the way to the top. Okay, just like that. And I wanna make sure, I'm gonna double check to make sure I'm getting everything in there. So my first number is going to E2. I wanna make sure I have that, so it is. I'm gonna press enter. So it gives you that amount. I'm gonna copy this formula over to the right side to the credit, as you can see. So this is the debit, this is the credit amount, and because in these two rows, it all shows as a positive. I'm going to do another equation. So equals debit amount minus this credit amount. Does it match? Do these two match? Yes, they do. All right, so now we're gonna do a pivot table. A pivot table basically summarizes a list of transactions into a summarized table, like you see here on the screen. So I'm gonna show y'all how I make this pivot table. I advise that you always have some type of description in your header here, instead of having this blank, for example, label this like location, for example. You're going to select all of the information you want to include in a pivot table. So I'm gonna press shift to the right key. So that takes all of my headers, and then I'm gonna put continue pressing shift, control, and then the down button and that is gonna include everything here. You don't necessarily need to put that total in there, that was just my check. So now that you have your entire information source selected, go to insert, go to pivot table, 
And I'm going to say, see I've already selected the range and then I'm going to say new worksheet. If you want to do existing worksheet, that means it's going to put the pivot table in this specific tab that you're in. But I put it on a new worksheet or a new tab. My preference personally. So I press OK. And so as you can see here, it created its own tab. So here is the original detail or listing of transactions. And here is the pivot table. I like to label that tab pivot so I know pivot, pivot. Little formula table is no longer on the right side. That's because I'm not selecting here. But as soon as you touch this pivot table, it'll pop up with these different fields again. Let's say I wanna analyze how much money I spent on a specific date. So I'm going to take this date I'm going to put it down here to rows. So I'm going to drag amount over to this sum values spot. Sometimes you'll find this when you drag the header over into this little bucket. Sometimes it'll say count for whatever reason, it'll just say count. And what that's doing is counting how many transactions you have. That can also be a helpful feature as well. But let's say for the purpose of this example, I want to know what the sum is. What you're going to do is go to this down button here, go to value field settings, and then you can change what that field setting is. So you could do the average, you could do the sum, you could do the count, whichever. I typically will use sum or count. I don't really use anything else, but you know, you could use it. So I'm gonna press sum, press okay. I'm gonna format this so I can see it a little bit easier. That amount, 362095 matches 362095. So the next formula that I wanted to share with y'all is some ifs. Let's say that I wanted to see how much money I spent in Boston. What you're going to do is you're going to press your equals sign and you're going to press, you're going to type in some if. You could walk through it using this function here, but I'm going to show you guys how to type it out yourself. I'm going to press the parentheses and as you can see, the first thing they're going to ask for is the range. So what am I looking for exactly? So I'm going to say, I'm going to look here in location. So the range is here through here, the criteria. Here's the quote marks. I'm going to say Dallas. So it's looking in those columns for Dallas, comma, to move on to the next piece of it. And then this is where you're going to actually be summing. So what am I going to be adding up? this column here. So starting here, control shift down. So I'm going to do this and then closing. So that is the end of my formula. It says Dallas. And we're going to double check this using our pivot table here in a second. Another way you could do this instead of having to type out Dallas, let's say I wanted to look at all of these locations. We have Dallas, we have Canada, we have payment, we have Boston, and it doesn't matter if you have uppercase or lowercase, what matters is the actual text that's inside of there. So instead of typing in Dallas yourself, you could do this. We're gonna delete this out of there, and when you are going to the second one, you can just press that column. And as you can see, it's the same amount. Let's say that you wanted to do the same thing for all locations, like I said here. To make it easier, instead of having to type this and I copy this formula over down to these, you're gonna see that we started here at C2, it's shifting downwards to C3. Everything down here instead of pulling from this first cell. And same thing goes here, C3, C4, C5, and that's not what we want necessarily. So to fix that, if I want to fix the specific range that I selected originally and I don't want it to move down, I want it to look specifically here even if I move the formula into a different cell. I'm just gonna start over just so you guys can see from start to finish. I'm gonna select the location all the way down and then I'm gonna press the F4 button. And then you see that these dollar signs come up. That means it is fixing it to this column, this row, this column, this row. If you press F4 again, it's only fixing it to the specific row. It doesn't matter what column it is. If you press F4 again, it's going to keep it on the specific column, but it'll move based on what row you're on. 
Then if you press F4 again, it goes away. So I'm gonna press this so that it fixes it to the column and the rows that I'm already looking at. I'm gonna select Dallas, which you can't see there, but it's selecting that Dallas word. And then again, you can see it is fixing it to the specific range and I'm not having to fix anything again. So to double check this, we're gonna use our VLOOKUP. So let's go back to our pivot table. So I'm gonna go to this pivot, I'm gonna change it. I wanna do location. For some reason, pivot tables don't really work all that well if it's on the actual pivot table itself. So I'm gonna copy it and paste values right below. So as you can see, it's not a pivot table. That table here is not showing up again. So that's why I pasted it over here. So I'm gonna say equals VLOOKUP. You can use this function over here too. And eventually you can just type it all yourself, which is what I typically do. Equals VLOOKUP. I'm looking up Dallas comma, so I can move to the next one. Table array means in what data set am I looking? I'm looking at this data set right here. I'm gonna press F4 so that whenever I copy that formula, it doesn't move, comma, to move to the next one. Now it's asking if I find Dallas, what information do I want to see? I wanna see the sum. So I'm gonna say column two, because it's column B. Then I type in false because I want an exact match. I don't want an approximate match. I want it to say, is there a Dallas in there? If so, what is the amount? If not, I want to see an error. So as you can see, it's pulling that. Now I'm going to double click again. Now it's pulling Canada from here. And there it is. Same thing with payment. Again, right there. Same thing with Boston 160595, Boston. One thing to know about VLOOKUPs, VLOOKUPs are going to be looking in this range in the leftmost column. So as you can see, here's Dallas. You wanna make sure Dallas or whatever you're looking for is going to be in the leftmost column. Okay, so that is how you do a VLOOKUP. All right, y'all, so those are some of the important Excel formulas that you need to know as an accountant. And trust me, it gets a lot easier as you do it more and more often. Just keep practicing it, and eventually you won't even have to have a little cheat sheet or anything like that. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to be a part of our Subby fam because we would love to have you. And I will talk to y'all in my next video. Hey y'all, it's Steffi and welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, you can see my shorts. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> so that's pretty much, uh, I don't know what else to say in this intro. There's not a lot more to say. This is the realness of filming. I wear Sophie shorts. Y'all, I've had these shorts since I was in college. Um, yes, I can still fit in them. They're a bit tighter than they used to be when I was in college. Okay, bye.